The M1 iMac is an absolute amazing machine. Not only is it stylized, as there's many color choices to choose from, although the front bezel is debatable, but if you just recently picked up one of these amazing machines, the next generation iMacs, these are all the awesome tips and tricks that every owner must know. These are the tips and tricks that I use on a daily basis, not just on my iMac, but on other devices, but also may apply on other Mac OS devices, but we'll be primarily obviously focused on the on the newer generation iMac as there's a couple additional settings that Apple innovated that everybody must know. Let's go ahead and get started with number one. And that is, depending on the color iMac that you got, you may have noticed the highlighted sections in the operating system is color coordinated to the body style of your iMac. If you want to change this, if you're not a huge fan of the default color that your machine is, equip with just simply go into the Apple icon on top of corner right here, system preferences, go and do general. And right here where it says highlighted color, you can literally change it so that no longer is an issue. You can change it to this Mac or other. Another useful tip is the ability to adjust the appearance. On the same menu, you can actually change it so change from light mode to dark mode depending on the time of day or you can set it to always dark mode. If you may have noticed, the wallpaper also changes. I like to personally leave it on light mode because the bezels just match a lot better. Now, a lot of owners always seem to forget about this feature. This is something that I always do on all my other Mac devices, is the dock station right here, the dock toolbar or whatever you like to call this. Default, it's always gonna be standing out. Sometimes it can get in the way, depending on the size screen or the amount of real estate space that you need. If you like to eliminate this, there is a cool setting you could adjust in the system preferences by going in here, going to docs and menu bar, and you'll see a check mark that you could actually enable right here where it says automatically hide and chill docs. With this enabled, now you will see that the docs went away. But when you move the mouse cursor down below, it'll automatically raise up. A cool thing you can also adjust here is you can magnify it and you can change the level right here. So now whenever you go ahead and do that, depending on the icon, the closer the mouse cursor moves to the icon of an application you want to go ahead and open, it slightly enlarges. You may also change the position of the dock station to be on the left side, do the same thing, or the right. I still prefer bottom. Now a new feature that got innovated for the next generation iMacs is the ability to opt for a Touch ID on the keyboard. Now this Touch ID is absolutely amazing. One of the most awesome things you could do is that it's not only be able to have access to your Mac by simply just scanning your fingerprint, but when you're walking away, instead of going into the settings and clicking lock or sleep mode or whatever, you can just tap on it once more, it will lock your device and you can just use your fingerprint to have access to your computer. This is a very appreciated feature that Apple added specifically for, finally for the iMac. So now it's really convenient. You can just lock your machine like that without even having to go and fiddle in the power off settings. Now, if you're like me who just has a bunch of icons on their desktop and you wanna quickly hide them, there's third party apps that you could download, like Hidden Me. It's a printed download application. And when you launch this simply on top right here, you'll have the ability to de hide desktop icons, giving you that clean layout. So if you're trying to present your display or your computer to a friend, this way they don't feel overwhelmed when they see that it's all cluttered with a bunch of icons. But in addition to that, the next tip is you can organize all this to make it even better. By going on top, as soon as you click on the desktop and click on this, on the top right here where it says view, use stacks or sort by. So when you use stacks, literally it will organize all the icons from videos, applications, to the files that you've downloaded, all nicely categorized. And you can just click on it to see what that category of files is. So this will allow you to organize all this and you can also change it by name, file type, and etc. Now, if you're ever curious, another third party app that I recommend checking out is Fan Control. It's free to download. Another free to download great app that I use the most. If you just go on Google and type in Fan Control Mac, it will be the first one right here. You click on it. This app will basically allow you to manually control your fan speed. So if you want to have them at full max, in case you're exporting a file and you're feeling that your computer isn't really performing as well because its fans are trying to stay cool, you could override it and allow your machine to stay cool. Fan longevity wise, that's one thing you gotta be concerned about, but I hardly doubt these fans will break anytime soon. Now new for Mac OS was obviously the new control center. It allows you to airdrop, connect your AirPods, really easy, just like how it is on your iPhone. 
But did you know, if you use one of these icons the most, you could actually click and drag it and attach it right there on the toolbar on top. So it's even more convenient to click on. So if you like to remirror your iPad a lot, you can literally just click and drag it there. And if you want to remove it back, just hold down command and click and drag it out and that's how you eliminate it. Now, if you happen to be an Apple Watch owner, you may also unlock your Mac by just using your Apple Watch. So if you quickly just go into system preferences and go into security, security and privacy, right here, you will have the ability to check mark the Apple Watch that you're wearing and just enter your passcode. Give it a couple of seconds for it to turn on. And now whenever you lock your device and you reawake it, your Apple Watch will give you a heptic tap, letting you know that your Mac computer was awakened from your Apple Watch. And you have to be close to it now as well. It no longer just unlocks in the household. Now you actually have to be close to the device or also just give a weak signal and it won't authorize the unlock. Speaking of authorization, you may also authorize settings and third-party applications by double tapping the power button this way as well. So you don't have to enter the passcode. And speaking of using our accessories to do certain things on our Mac, if you have to sign a document on the go and you don't have access to a printer, you could always use your iPhone's display as a touchscreen so you can actually sign your signature on your phone or another Apple device like an iPad. To do this, simply open up a PDF that you're trying to, where you see the markup tool, click on it, and right over here, where it shows the signature icon, you could create a signature, either using the camera, or you can select iPhone or iPad. Select the device, wait a couple of seconds, you'll notice that the screen on your iPhone is now a signature screen. Sign it with your finger, press done, and there you have it. Now, if you're trying to find the sweet spot of brightness, yes, you can adjust the brightness off the brightness control on the keyboard by tapping F1 or F2. But did you know if you actually hold shift and option and do the same thing, you'll notice it no longer lowers the brightness by a single bar. It will actually get it down to the exact point right here, which is kind of cool. Now, a feature that a lot of people always forget is that you do have the ability to split screen. You don't have to download a third party application or anything like that. Mac OS literally has this ability built in. By going over the green circle icon on the window, you could actually not just only enter full screen if you hold, if you just hover over it for a little bit, but you may also change it to split the screen either from the left. I love this. This is a very useful feature if you're trying to utilize as much space as possible on your workflow. And it's really cool because you really do take advantage of this 24 inch display that the new iMacs come equipped with. Now, if you ever need to do a quick mathematical question or money conversion of any kind, you can literally use Spotlight Search and type in whatever equation you're trying to do and it'll give you the answer right there on the go. It's much faster than searching for a calculator and launching it that way. Now, if you unfortunately picked up the Magic Mouse with your Mac, you didn't upgrade for the trackpad, I highly recommend adjusting the settings to the mouse by simply just going into preference, system preferences, go into mouse controls, and right here you have the ability to adjust the track speed as well as be able to enable more gestures and they show you the gesture previews right there so I'll definitely do experiment on this i you notice i left my track speed at fast because the less of this the better now in safari picture and picture is supported on some video providers youtube as a final example if you play a youtube video there's a trick that you could do by right clicking twice you can click on enter picture in picture and now you can minimize safari play whatever youtube video you're reviewing and multitask and you can move this anywhere around as well as adjust the size like so and those were 15 tips and tricks but here's a bonus whenever you're trying to preview a document or an image on the desktop by simply tapping on it once and tapping on the space bar, it will give you a quick preview instead of having to launch the main application for that PDF or image that you're trying to view. Super convenient. But with these tips and tricks, you should be able to master this machine and really get the most usage out of this device. If you got some good and useful information out of this video, I'd really appreciate if you actually leave this video a like as well as get subscribed as I got some accessory guide video coming out for the new generation iMac. If you have some accessories that you like to recommend on your own for me to check out and see if it's good or not or give you the brief overview for you to know that make that final decision if there's an accessory that you've been eyeballing feel free to comment down below i'll take a look at it and possibly feature it in 
the iMac accessory video. So make sure you are subscribed for that. In the meantime, if you'd like to check out more, check out this video over here as I share my one week review with this incredible machine. And then that video over there, that's just a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching, take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.